Love the videos? Support the channel. Pre-order your shirt now at absolutebeast.org. Scott Pancheck has been one of the most consistent CrossFit Games athletes in the past 10 years. Yes, you can argue that the likes of Bjorg Carl Goodmanson and Patrick Vellner are slightly more consistent than Scott because they take podium positions. And then you can also argue that Rich Froning and Matt Fraser are more consistent because they actually win. However, out of the people who have stood on the podium, Scott Pancheck being not one of them is one of the most consistent athletes, in my opinion, of all time. With eight CrossFit Games appearances finishing in the top 10, seven of those times, I believe Scott Pancheck is an absolute beast. <laughs> Um, honestly, just not being on the podium year after year uh, has always been hard and uh, it's, it keeps me hungry and keeps me coming back for more. But uh, that's definitely been, you know, something that kind of always weighed on me. But I think, you know, in that same moment, I, I think if I would have went to the CrossFit Games my first year and won the CrossFit Games, I'm, I might not have came back. I don't know. I, it's just like it's crazy how like things happen for a reason and you they push you and drive you to be the person that you're supposed to be. Scott Pancheck is 32 years old. He weighs in at about 185 to 190 pounds and he's five foot nine, prime CrossFit height. Now there's not a lot of CrossFit knowledge about Scott Pancheck when it comes to his 1RMs and his strength stats, but this is what I could pull up. With no posted 1RMs, Scott came in fourth overall in the 2018 CrossFit total, winning the back squat with an impressive 500 pound back squat pressing 210 pounds and deadlifting 525 pounds. He came second overall for the clean event at the CrossFit Games with a 375 pound clean, purely being edged out by Matt Fraser himself. But to get one up Matt Fraser, he also beat Matt in the speed clean ladder at the 2019 Rogue Invitational, taking first overall out of all the competitors there. When we look towards the Open, Scott Pancheck made his first appearance in 2012. However, it wasn't until 2013 until he became very dominant in the Open scene. With four top five finishes and four top 30 finishes, the new format of the Open would have favored Scott greatly. However, he only got to experience it for the final year, which was the first year of the Open where he got a ticket straight to the CrossFit Games. When we look at Scott Pancheck, I like to reminisce on the regionals, specifically the central regional that Scott competed in. It was definitely marked as one of the most competitive regionals of all time, being the hardest way to qualify for the CrossFit Games. However, generally speaking, most of the people who came out of the central regional in the men's division normally qualified and made it top 10 at the CrossFit Games itself. So you knew that the caliber of athlete coming out of this region was going to be excellent. With names such as Rich Phoney, Dan Bailey, Graham Holmberg, Jacob Hepner, Sam Dancer, Alex Anderson, Marcus Hendren, Matt Hewitt, Will Morad, Nick Uranka, and Dre Strom, qualifying for the CrossFit Games through this regional would be the hardest challenge these athletes would face. With only three qualifying spots up for grabs at some points, it made it very difficult for Scott and other athletes to qualify. However, Scott Pancheck's first year at the games was quite a lucky one. At that point in time, CrossFit had a rule that if a previous CrossFit Games champion took a top three spot at regionals, that position will get passed down to the next eligible competitor. Lucky for Scott, both Graham and Rich Froning 
made it into the top three. At the time, he was fifth overall, but this still gave him a qualifying spot for the CrossFit Games. And needless to say, he made a performance, coming fourth overall in his very first rookie appearance. In 2013, however, Scott definitely cemented his mark on CrossFit, taking second overall in convincing fashion at the 2013 Central Regional. It was 2014, however, I want to bring to your guys' attention at home. This was the most remarkable competition of all time. The throwdown between Rich Froning versus Scott Pancheck was one for the ages and truly cemented their friendship together. There was three events that was merely separated by one second, even one event that they tied on. The competition, the workout speed, and their performance at this regional made it a spectacle for both fans and athletes alike. Really putting up the question that, is Rich Froning beatable? Does he have holes in his armor? Can Scott Pancheck be the man to take him down at the CrossFit Games in 2014? Of course, we all know that wasn't the case. However, it led the question that he was beatable. Scott proved to the world that someone can beat Rich Froning. But let's speed forward to another memorable regional experience for Scott Pancheck. That was the 2018 Central Regional. With the introduction of Matt Fraser into the region, as well as his younger brother, Saxon Pancheck, Scott had a lot on the line this year. In the final event of the 2018 regionals was something truly remarkable that would probably go down to be one of the best celebrations and most memorable moments at that regional. Saxon Pancheck qualifying for the games. Now that we've covered off his open and regional performances, let's jump to the CrossFit Games. Scott was definitely a consistent athlete. He had his eyes on that podium every year, just falling short each year from one, two, or even three positions overall. If we look back to 2012, 2013, and even 2019, Scott Pancheck took fourth overall. In 2014, he took fifth, and in 2015, 16, and 17, he took sixth. So many of these years, he finished in the side of the top 10. The only year he didn't was 2018, and he only came 11th. So his consistent reign at the games was definitely one to be looking upon. However, so many high place finishes at the game, you'd assume that Scott was winning event after event after event. However, he only won one event in his reign of CrossFit, the 2012 Fran. Which funnily enough, I was reading an article by Mark Pro, which is one of his sponsors. And it mentioned his favorite workout of all time was Fran, which was convenient. He mentioned that it was truly a total body workout Thrusters alone are built on the foundation of squatting and pressing, complete core activation. The thruster is also a continuous movement which spikes your heart rate, teaching you how to breathe with the movement. Since the 2019 CrossFit Games and Scott Pancheck's fourth overall finish, since then, he's announced that he's now moved on from individual competition and is joining the team scene with Rich Froning after Dre Strom officially announced his resignation from the team and his retirement from CrossFit. The first time we got to see Scott Pancheck perform with his new leader, Rich Froning, was at the 20.1 Rogue announcement event where Scott Pancheck diced Rich Froning on a live platform, giving fans much to laugh about, especially seeing the champ himself get destroyed by his new team member. Outside of competition, Scott Pancheck owns a gym called CrossFit Mentality, which he runs side by side by with his wife, Kristen Pancheck, who also in her own remarks is a mini beast. It mentions on the website that she's holding the current 55 kilo clean and jerk Ohio State record, as well as she was a part of a team regional in 2017. You can find more of Scott Pancheck on his Instagram at Scott Pancheck. But what are your thoughts of Scott Pancheck? My final thoughts are, he's such a legend of the sport. He is someone who's molded and defined the way we perform CrossFit. His easygoing nature, his glorious smile, and his ability to perform year after year after year is the reason why I've put him on this list. But it's not just done there. Scott Pancheck has now joined the team scene, where as we've seen since Rich Froning joined, has been the most dominant force in CrossFit in the team events. With this super team now created with other people like Tasia and China Cho, will CrossFit Mayhem be beatable? Or will they just dominate competition after competition? And just if you didn't know, Scott Pancheck was on a winning team, taking both first in 2014 and 2016 in the team series. So he's got some experience in the teams, and I'm really excited to see what he can pull out next. 
What are your thoughts about Scott Pancheck? Comment down below now, as well as let me know who you want to see on the next Absolute Beast episode. Without further ado, I'm your host, Tyler, and you guys, stay a beast.